What's up, everyone? This is Tony, and welcome back to my podcast. Uh, before we get started, I do want to remind everyone to please click the like button and the subscribe button down below to show some support for the channel, and it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Um, besides that, I do also want to ask everyone to comment down below what name you want to name this podcast, because right now we do not have an official name. We've just been calling it the TLZ Podcast, which is a good name. If everyone wants to stick with it, let me know. If you want to have a different name, let me know what name suggestions you have. Give me some ideas. You know, I'm running out of them. So, um, Besides that, let's get into the podcast. Joining us today is the uh, junior Pan Am gold medalist and a two thousand and the two thousand nineteen participant of the Junior World Championships, uh, Joshua Yang. What's up, Josh? Hey, what's up, Tony? What's up? How's it How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm it's good. Been good. I'm good. Thank you for coming in today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, my first memory of you was actually in that LABC tournament. Remember that I played against you, where you completely destroyed me in the first quarter. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, nah. man, that was a hard game. I uh, I had no pressure, so it was, it was a little easier for me in the beginning, but, you know, you started to catch on. Yeah. For the for the people that didn't watch, uh, if you didn't watch Jacob's podcast, um, that was the same tournament that I played Jacob where he, like, went all, all off on me in the first set. And the same thing happened next round with Josh. And he completely came in first round, scared the poop out of me, this kid. Like, he, like, he came in just, like, so fast, right, like everyone's saying. And like, I was so shocked because I was like, man, this little short kid, like, how is he going to do anything against me, right? But he completely beat me in the first set. So like, that, that was a great game. How did you feel playing that game? It was interesting, you know, like, you're so scared. You're, you're older, you're like so much bigger, you're taller, you know. It's really intimidating to play against, you know, number one seeds. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know about number one seed that yeah. time. But. Yeah, you, you received definitely, but you know, uh-huh. I was just like, oh, I have no pressure. I mean, I just go in, just finish it. Yeah. Try your hardest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely, I definitely have size on you. That's for sure. Definitely have yeah. size. Yeah. <laughs> I'll admit that. <laughs> I'll sure. admit that. Yep. Um, but you definitely earned my absolute respect in that Seattle tournament you played. Um, I remember you had a fever, like a really high fever, and you had to play singles against Eric Duong, which is like one of the best singles players, right? And um you played three games against him. It was a close game. And I was watching that game because everyone was like the entire court, like around the court was like surrounded with people watching that game. How was playing that game for you and that tournament in general? Uh, I mean, starting off the tournament, it wasn't, it was, I mean, I didn't have a fever at first, you know, like coming into Seattle, it was really cold and everything. So like maybe the weather affected my, you know, like health. I don't, I don't yeah. know what was going on, but you know, the day before, I think it was the second day of the tournament, second day of three. I think I, I caught like a fever at night or something. I don't know what happened, but the next day I was just like, wow, my head it's just like, it's, it's heated. It's like, mm-hmm. it's so hard to like focus. It's like, I yeah. feel so sick and everything, mm-hmm. you know? So my dad went on to go like one of those like pharmacy places to get some Advil, mm-hmm. you know, something that helped with my head, my headache yeah. and stuff. And yeah. You know, I was preparing a lot for that match too. Like before the tournament and everything, I was training super hard. You know, yeah. I knew I was going to come to place Eric. Mm-hmm. yeah eric's eric's a really tough opponent yeah he can you know, play yeah. yeah go ahead go ahead uh, i mean like maybe if if i even if i didn't have that fever i don't know if i would have won you know like mm-hmm. he's that tough So like to yeah. go three sets having a fever against eric is like really surprising to me maybe like a little bit of luck mm-hmm. like you know maybe some people play better with you know like sickness because yeah. like they play smarter yeah. they like adapt to it better i guess mm-hmm. they think i don't know i don't know what's going on yeah sometimes <laughs> it's hard to some, describe it's like the feeling yeah. yeah sometimes when athletes you know when, you, when they get injured or um or sick you know they have that adrenaline rush during the game and they just kind of yeah. forget about it and yeah. they just completely focus in the game and i think you were like completely like just focused on your goal to win the game you know and it was like yeah full on it was a great match great match by both of you guys yeah um I think this is also a good reminder for younger players as well. You know, don't underestimate your opponents, especially when they're hurt or when they're sick. Don't make fun of them because they're coming. You know, sometimes some things like that can happen. <laughs> right, Josh? I'm sure I'm sure that's happened to, to you before because that's definitely happened to me. Whereas some some yeah. like my opponent's sick and I'm like, ah, this, this guy's over. Like he's like, he can't even he can't even yeah. run anymore. And then he comes back swinging, you know. So definitely Man, this is a lesson. Hard. <laughs> yeah, lesson for younger players. Um but you did gradually climb the ladder in junior badminton. You got uh, better and better each year. When did you um, realize that you have become a really good player? I mean, actually, it wasn't by, like, ranking that I realized that I was getting better. It was, like, 
the recognition I got from other players and coaches. Like, there was this one time, I think I played against Synergy or someone. Like, I don't remember who, but, like, mm-hmm. I think um, it was Coach Raj, like, from Synergy right now, or, like, mm-hmm. an ex-coach. Yeah. Uh, he gave me recognition after the match, and I was, like, super surprised. I was, like, wow. And then the next match after that, I feel I felt, like, super motivated again. Like, he mm-hmm. just inspired me to, like, play yeah at my better, like, a better level. Yeah. I feel you. I feel it's, Raj has... It's super inspiring, yeah. Raj does, you know, have his thoughts on really good players, and um, I have yeah. a lot of respect for Coach Raj. He also came up to me a lot um, after games. He's like, man, you're so good, and whatever. You know, he gave me the recognition as well, and it, I appreciate him a lot, just like, you know, mm-hmm. you did. Um, yeah. That's really cool, man, because I, you definitely earned my respect, and I know that you definitely earned the respect <laughs> of the pe- of people at Z, because we talked about you before and how great you were. Um you know, when, you know, after the Seattle game and everything, it was just amazing. You know, it was an amazing performance by you. Um, most players actually have like a rough time in their first Pan Ams, right? But you actually won two silver gold, uh, two silver medals um, in junior Pan Ams in 2017, your first one. Um, how was playing that Pan Ams? Did you expect to win that one or like get to like finals for that one? I mean, going into Pan Ams, I was really nervous because, like, the courts are, like, just so much bigger and it's, like, Mm -hmm. the crowd and everything is, like, super loud. Like, the environment's so different. Yeah. Like, coming into it, I I wasn't thinking of making it out of semis or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just like, wow, it's just my first time, so let's just, like, test everything out, you know, get a feel of everything, have a good experience, you know, Mm -hmm. just try my best. And, you know, with a little bit of luck, I don't know, like, got to finals <laughs> yeah. yeah i think the thing that um a lot of first like first time junior pan am players they they have this mental block as like i came this far i came out of my country to to, to play this tournament i want to do well in it did you have that kind of pressure on you i mean i don't think i did i don't remember it was like three years ago so like mm-hmm. i don't know it was kind of interesting though like i felt yeah, there's a lot of pressure, definitely, like, representing the U.S. against mm-hmm. these other countries, Canada, Brazil, yep. you know, Mexico, and everyone. It's really For nerve. Sure. Yeah. Nerve-wracking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, what do you think yeah. cost you those two finals games? Because you, you got in finals for both events, doubles mm-hmm. and singles. What do you think cost uh, it? I don't know. Maybe... I mean, I think doubles, I was really close, but singles, you know, I wasn't as close, but maybe it was like how nervous I got before the game. Cause like, you know, finals is only like one court at a time. And like mm-hmm. everyone has eyes on you and like high expectations for your, like, who's going to win. Like, wow. Is it going to be Joshua or like Brandon, my opponent for that match? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's really nerve wracking to play in finals for NMs. Like, everyone's staring at you like cheering yeah. it's like super yeah. loud and everything yeah it's just i don't know maybe i was just super nervous that game or like he was just playing really good mm-hmm. yeah it's just a different atmosphere you know from our tournaments in the u.s just bigger crowds like brazil has some drums and stuff i don't know they like to bang on yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. everything you know? different countries just cheering and it's really loud in the arena but it's, it's a good energy in there you know and it's fun to play in, in junior mm-hmm. pan ams with everyone Definitely. cheering yeah and obviously you know the the two silver medals that you won in 2017 junior pan ams uh, was a big accomplishment for you at the time right so uh f- when you get into when you go into 2018 what was your goal for that year you know my goal was like you know again to make jit and qualify for pan ams again obviously and then like Maybe, you know, grind the ranking again. Like, maybe make number one, top five, top ten. I don't know. Somewhere around those boundaries. And, you yeah. know, it's really hard to, like, maintain at the top level because, like, everyone's just improving, improving. Yeah. That's that's what just stands out from the top and, like, the lower, you know. Definitely, yeah. Um, do you think ranking is very important? Actually, I feel like it's you know it's iffy because you know some people win a lot some people play a lot Mm -hmm. some people aren't able to go to tournaments and like you know play Mm -hmm. so it's really hard to decide like person's rank and how good they are but i mean it does matter like number one of course like you're going to be pretty good top 10 top five you know they're going to be pretty good so yeah Yeah. i think i think for the ranking like um a lot of 
like parents or or um they they strategize rankings some some parents they really understand it and the calculations for it and like they strategize like oh like you got to play this tournament this tournament this tournament to get enough points for to play that you know but like um i i always thought of ranking as like if you're good enough ranking doesn't matter because like uh, the some some parents they they have this mindset of oh i need to get a good ranking so i can play easier people in the first round right mm. and then but in reality i feel like if you're really good in so, at something it, the, the ranking doesn't matter but then the, this thing happened where i got injured right and then my ranking went like so low and the first <laughs> round i played like freaking second seed first seed and like oh my god now i was like oh my god now i realize why people are going for ranking these days it's really <laughs> tough to make it out you know if, yeah if you play first kid right away because usually that would be like a finals game yeah but i'm freaking playing winston first round I'm like oh my god what is happening like <laughs> usually the first yeah, year tournament is pretty easy but i i feel everyone's pain now you know of, of having like a low ranking and having to get past like a tough opponent in the beginning you know mm -hmm. but um, in 2019, you had one of your biggest badminton accomplishments. You won a gold medal in uh, Junior Pan Ams, which is crazy, crazy good. And you actually won this before you won uh, a title in Nationals. So how would you feel winning that gold medal? I mean, um, it, was, it was a really good accomplishment. Like winning gold in Pan Ams is always like a fun and like exciting experience, you know, like and winning it in doubles is just it's great like everyone's watching doubles everyone loves men's doubles like it's a super exciting match and everything mm -hmm. and having the experience or like the achievement to win gold and pan Am is just like mm -hmm. really good honor and like you know i'm representing the u.s so like it feels good to like win gold for the u.s yeah and like take home just like one gold you know definitely yeah who did you play in the finals like what country for that one um i think i played canada Oh, uh, tough. Entire, like, um, you know, it was at Canada too. So, mm. nice. Like, That's home court. They had home yeah, court advantage. Court, still got them. Nice, nice. Canada's yeah. very strong. Canada's very strong. That's that's great accomplishment for you. Um, after that amazing, amazing accomplishment, you obviously uh played adult nationals and won two silver me uh two silver medals in singles and doubles, which is crazy, crazy good, especially for adult nationals because it's a complete different tier, right? Because you're playing against adults, and you you played the Olympians in the final round, you know, Philip Chu and uh, and his partner. So how was playing against those uh, Olympians like? Oh, man, uh, it was really scary. They're so big compared to me and Henry. Like we're just juniors and not even like graduating yet. And they're like Olympians, like Olympic level. Man, it was scary. It was really I was really nervous. I don't know why. Like I should have I should feel like no pressure going into that match. But I was feeling really nervous. Like it's hard to play against adults like when you're still young you know yeah. like the yeah. difference the experience the knowledge the mm -hmm. skill level you know like the gap is just like huge like you yeah. just need like from transitioning to juniors adults mm -hmm. it's crazy man you need a lot of experience yeah. a lot of patience their their yeah. shots are very you know well they're very well thought out and um they never hit a you know useless shot. Every single shot has yeah. a purpose, right? So yeah. it helps them set up and get ready for an opportunity. So they're very mature players, like you said. You know, I totally agree because I play them uh, also. I think in adult nationals, yeah, I played them in. Oh no, not adult national. I played them in the Thomas Cup trials once, and then I, I know exactly what you're oh. talking about. Yeah, um, and talking about Olympians, your coach, uh, Coach Tony, um, is also <laughs> an Olympic uh, gold medalist, right? Um, amazing player, amazing person, and of course, an amazing coach, right? Um, what was, if you can pick one moment um, that resonated with you with Coach Shelley, what would it be? Um, I think it would be when I got the, like, when he asked, like, there's this one time, I think it was for like an open, like local tournament or something. He asked me to play doubles with him. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised. I was like, wow, let me, let me take this chance. Like, I get to play with Coach Tony, right? Yeah, yeah. He's a legend. Like, man, I was just, like, I just memorized, like, in my memory, I was like, wow, I got to memorize this. Like, this is such a cherishable moment. Like, yeah. oh, my God. It's yeah. amazing. Playing with Coach yeah. Tony in a tournament and winning, too. Mm -hmm. Dang. It's just incredible. Coach Tony can partner with anybody and play good. I'm telling you. Yeah. He, he can partner with anybody and play good. He's just such a talented player. Uh, re really brilliant um, in his strategies. Um, extremely smart. Um, talking about training, 
Um, now, you had the oppor- you have the opportunity to train with both um, Don and St- uh, and Vincent Chu, who are both amazing, amazing player with uh, many national titles, many um, international titles, right? So, um, how have training with them affected your game or or your training? Um, I mean, training with both of them are like, you know, it's really fun. Like, I like training with them. Like, it's super. How do I say like? motivating because like they're both like really good players they've shown results they train really hard you know they always like encourage me to train harder every time they step onto the court they play really well Mm -hmm. you know like it's it's a good training experience like yeah i get i learn a lot from playing against them training with them you know talking to them they're really good uh friends players and you know like fellow Mm -hmm. students Mm -hmm. yeah so like training with them is just like it gives me like a boost you know like it encourages me like to train harder like i want to beat them you know i want to like yeah. uh play at their level or something like vincent's level like qualifying for olympics mm-hmm. i know vincent's trying to do that for like yeah the years yeah mm-hmm. he's really trying he's really dedicated i want to vincent's like, a great model. player yeah hey that's a good role model to have i'm just gonna give her a little background vincent is a great great player um i think he's exceptional in his mix play um incredibly good at covering for for the girl um and just a great mix player all around you know i think he's like the best mix player that junior badminton's ever seen but um i looked up to him a lot too he's a great player great person I, i know his family pretty well too they're really nice um but yeah definitely having these great teammates around um really help push i i mean I don't want to put words in your mouth, but probably help push you to, uh, you know, beat them and, you know, work harder in training to have that ambition, that drive, you know, to continue. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely feel that. Um, but still on the topic of training, um, most, ath- most athletes have like this opponent in their head where, you know, whenever they're training, they imagine it, you know, facing them, right. They imagine him or her facing them af- across from the court. Who would that opponent be for you? I mean, actually, it's pretty funny because I don't even have to imagine. I could just see them already. Like, it's, I want to be like Don and Vincent, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, they're so good, and I want to, like, beat them so badly. Yeah. Like, I play against them every day, but I always, like, get close maybe or, like, sometimes 50-50, sometimes beat them. You know, it's really close. It's really fun to play against them. I learn a lot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, like, yeah, I think Don would be the most – I want to be in junior badminton because I've never beaten him yet. And like, everyone's saying he's like the best right now. Yeah. He's like number one. He's always winning, you know? Yeah. Super, I, super good players, you know, mm-hmm. want to beat them. Don's a great champion, you know, extremely, extremely smart. Um, you know, my, my grandpa said this thing about him. My grandpa, if you don't know, he's a, he's a coach uh, from mm-hmm. Z and, um, I, I, I forgot to talk to this, uh, talk to Don about this the other time when he was on the podcast, but my grandpa, uh, the, my coach actually said, um, Don has an extremely good sense of the of the like the bird when it's flying through the air he will know immediately if that bird's going to be in or out like he's so good at like he he's played so much and has so much experience that his knowledge like helps him predict that so well and I think it's so true because he literally like if it if the bird is like two centimeters off from the line he will let it go and then he'll be out <laughs> and like how did you see that like it's so close to the line but he's just exceptionally great you know and um, of course, after 2019, um, 2020 is going to come. And of course, we're in a pandemic right now. But after the pandemic is over, what are your goals for 2020? Um, I mean, I don't know if the pandemic will end at 2020, but like maybe 2021, you know, like um, I'm thinking like just training right now. I don't know. It's really hard to decide with this, you know, coronavirus and everything like mm-hmm. nothing is going right. You know, like, it's really difficult to, like, set a goal of where you want to be at. Like, oh, I'm going to play adult tournaments next year. or I'm going to play juniors still. Because I still have one more year of juniors. And I don't know if I want to play that. Because, you know, adults is, like, so much more, more of, like, a challenge. Or, like, not more of a challenge, but, like, it's better to play. Because going into adults is really hard. So, like, if you get that extra year ahead of you, like, it's just it helps you against those younger year players yeah i agree you know maybe it gets it gives me more experience to like you know Mm -hmm. just play yeah do you want to hear my advice on this one yeah from a person 
No, no, I, I, from, um, I totally agree with what you're saying because it does help because when you play with adults, they're a lot faster. And when you go back to playing juniors, it's like a lot slower, right? But I think you should really cherish your last year in junior Bampton because I wish I had a couple more years. It's just because um, you, you obviously can't go back to junior Bampton, right? But you can yeah. play adult for a long time. So I think if I were you, I, I'd suggest you like just play the last year in junior Bampton, enjoy it, win every, all the titles that you can, and then move on because you only have one year left, you know, and you can never come back to this um, time. And I think, I don't know, I can't say on behalf of everybody who's um, already past junior Bampton, but I myself want, w- would want to play one more year or two more years if I was healthy, you know? So what yeah, do you think? Actually, uh, yeah, I, I think I'd agree, actually. Yeah, juniors, yeah. like, you can't go back to it. And, like, yeah. you know, you want to cherish every moment of it. You want to, yeah. like, take all the experiences you can, yeah. you know, play Pan Ams again, play Worlds again, you know. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Because I, 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 I want to see you more in junior band too. I want to watch you play. That's that too. Um, but talking about your future, we actually talked a little, you know, had a little meeting before this just to, you know, get everything together. And you say that you want to go pro, right? You want to go pro after mm-hmm. junior badminton. And what would be your goal? You know, what would be your goal? Like world champion, Olympian, what, what, was, what would you be? I mean, everyone's goal is to like win a tournament. But like my goal right now is just like to make, you know, grind myself to like, know get recognition recognition from other players like those top level players like moda axelson mm-hmm. you know then dan maybe if he watches <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. like ginting you know all mm-hmm. those like good players if i get recognition from like at least maybe one of them or like some of them like that would be like dream come true already like i mean of course it's good to like win mm-hmm. but like you know u.s players it's hard to like go to the top level like we're just like yeah. behind and everything you know we gotta yeah. like step it up and stuff we gotta just like work a lot harder yeah. than we do because they have so much more you know they're just built for it you know yeah they have a complete system unlike yeah. us where we don't really have like a complete system for the whole country but they have like yeah. a united system for the whole entire country of players you know yeah, so i mean support. they're just yeah a little more organized and support from the country as well um but it's fun. It's cool that you bring up um, Lean Dan and Axelson and Mamota. Because I was going to ask you, you know, who do you want to be like in the future? Like one of these players, which one would it be? Um, I think, you know, it's it's pretty hard to choose because like all of them are really good. They're all like, they have like their signature styles and everything. Mm-hmm. I think I would want to be like Ginting because like the style is just like match. I think I like playing like an Indonesian style, like the speed, mm. like, the skill, like, yeah the deceptions like the skill shots you know everything mm-hmm. like that how yeah. Ginting plays Definitely. and it's amazing watching him play too him and yeah. Momoda those games mm-hmm. are always super fun to watch super exciting yeah <laughs> crazy long rallies crazy yeah. long rallies yeah crazy long mm-hmm. it's crazy nice um but that was actually the fun question for this um podcast for joshua which is a relatively easy question compared to you know what everybody got and there's a reason for that there's a reason for that because there are some tough questions that the viewers asked and we're gonna get into that right now (laughs) um so the first one is pretty easy um they asked how do you jump that high and let me just say like three or four people asked me this so a lot of people want to know this uh i don't know what to say man like Maybe I'm gifted. I don't know. I don't really, you know, practice vertical jumps or anything. I just Mm -hmm. jump a lot, you know, maybe it's like a tendency. Maybe I just get used to it, you know, like maybe I jump a lot. So like, I don't know, like improves, I guess. Like the more you do it, the more Mm -hmm. better you get at it. I I, I don't know, man. It's hard to explain. It's just built. He's just built that way. (laughs) He's just built that way. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I do. He's he's just built that way. He's just built that way. No, actually, I didn't even realize I jumped so high until someone told me, like, can you dunk? Like, they asked me, can I dunk? And I was like, what what do you mean? Like, I can't even jump Uh, that high. And he was like, have you tried? No, I've never tried, actually. Like, you should try it. Maybe that will happen. Oh, my Uh, God. Somebody should videotape that. Somebody should videotape (laughs) that. Yeah, yeah, I was really surprised. I actually didn't notice it at first too, but then when somebody mentioned it in the in the questions, I was like, "Oh yeah, he does jump hell. Like, he just jumps really <laughs> damn high." I was like, but "Yeah, that's great." Um, second question: How'd you get so fast? How'd you get? Oh, so fast? okay. Well, this one, this one's a little bit easier to explain because you know, you just yeah. practice footwork, pick up birds, you know, running, mm-hmm. a lot of stamina, a lot of like footwork, leg yeah. muscles. You know, you just gotta practice. It's just a lot of practice. You know? Yeah. 
helps with speed, like how smooth you move and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I definitely feel that. Um, for the younger players, when you hear that, 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 that just means that whatever is hard in training, don't slack off. It's what, it's what he just said. Because, you know, those <laughs> things that you mentioned are the worst exercises to do during training. I don't know about everybody else, but I don't like doing those. But you still have to do it, focus on them, and you'll get fast. Right, Josh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? The boring stuff always helps you more. Yeah, yeah. The boring it's stuff. always boring stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's always the, the most it's painful ones. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, next question they asked, what was your favorite match ever? um i think it would have to be against um I, it'd be a singles match like against i think kelvin chung like because mm-hmm. i remember like uh i think it was my first tournament winning that time after beating kelvin because it, it felt like really good after i beat him like mm-hmm. just it felt nice and like you know a uh, relief I felt a lot of relief because, like, I finally won a tournament, right? Like, grinding the tournament, the ranks. Yeah. Trying to make these, like, uh, GIT and, like, World Junior Trials and everything. Like, after beating Kelvin, I was like, wow. Thank God. I'm in it. I win it. You know, like, Mm -hmm. I'm starting to get better. I'm improving. I can see my, like, improvements Mm -hmm. through, like, training super hard and everything. Like, yeah. And Kelvin's a top player. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. It's really fun playing against him. I play him like a lot. I've had like six or seven times already. Dang. Close all the time. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. But yeah, he, he's a very good player. He can run a lot. You know, he has great stamina. He can really yeah. wear you out. Um, and I think that match probably helped like motivate you even more to work harder because you see that improvement coming in. And right. Yeah. There, yeah. There you go. And um, this is a fun question from the viewers. They asked, how do you get that hair? <laughs> uh i mean i have really thick hair actually like it just stays up i don't use any like you know Mm -hmm. material any gel any like sprays or anything Mm -hmm. i actually don't need to use any of that i just like blow dry my hair every time i go before i go to bed yeah after i shower and everything you know Mm -hmm. i get my haircuts from my uncle so like i'm really thankful for him gives me free haircuts and everything Mm -hmm. he's born that way guys he's born that way (laughs) just like the jump he's born that way (laughs) born but yeah Man. nice um yeah. why do you why do you like deceptive shots so much this is actually a very common question too like two or three people ask me this <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I feel like it's a really bad habit of me like i always try doing deceptive shots you know like mm-hmm. i think people would call me like the highlight reel like you know just go for super good trick shots look good yeah. just like only look good not you know good <laughs> yeah i I mean, it's a really bad habit. I'm like, I'm trying to change it right now. So like yeah. to make more simple shots, you know, mm-hmm. more reliant shots that I can like mm-hmm. uh, depend on when I'm not so deceptive, not so tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause normally at that higher tier level, like people don't do deceptive shots. It's just like yeah. once in like every 10 rallies or something. Like, mm-hmm. It's like a specialty. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's like a specialty I have. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, think- I didn't really start off off with deceptive shots i actually learned from tony like tony tony really? you know my coach he taught me everything i know like mm-hmm. i don't know why he taught me that but he taught me that so yeah. i was like okay maybe it's useful at first i just used a lot of it and i was like wait yeah. maybe this isn't so good it's just too tricky and I mean, yeah yeah too fancy i think um like players need to know that there are two different types of deceptive shots there's one that actually like is useful where you know you you kind of like fake the opponent a little bit or push it back or whatever it may be but then there are mm-hmm. deceptive shots where you're like just Hoppa! you know like, like <laughs> yeah yeah you know there's, yeah. there's two different deceptive shots like one type you can you can use you know to help you know stop the opponent's footwork in the middle and like just uh, disrupt their rhythm and then there are those that that just isn't going to be worth your time i don't know about you but do your coaches yell at you when you do that in training like those like those like crazy like trick shots you know what i mean actually in training i don't really do that often like i don't really try to do it because you know i'm always focused on doing like that particular drill Mm -hmm. i'm like never trying to do a trick shot maybe like after like the drill or something like break Mm -hmm. time i try to do it and my coach is like what are you doing man like (laughs) these shots like you're not gonna use it yeah yeah I mean, we get yelled at a lot. It's like when we when we're playing like in training or like we're sparring or something, and then somebody used a trick shot, and then you just hear the coach yell at them because <laughs> like they don't want <laughs> yeah, us to like funny. they don't want us to have that habit of doing that in in, in tournaments as well. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some that you can. Use. <laughs> yeah, bad habit. Um, 
another person asked, I, I want to ask this too. Um, what's World Juniors like? Because you did play World Juniors in 2019. By the way, congrats on that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, it was a really fun experience, actually. I, I mean, I didn't play too well because like, it was my first one and I was like super nervous for it, actually. It's really different from Pan Ams, actually, because there's a lot more people watching live on YouTube rather than like on the stands and everything. Like mm-hmm. feeling that pressure when I walked onto the court, I was like shaking and I was like really cold in Russia too. Like we went to Russia for Pan- uh, World Juniors. Yeah. So, like once I stepped onto the court, I had to put my like sweater on and like warm up. I was like, wow, I need to get ready. Come on, come on, let's go. Yeah. And I was like, once I started the rallies, I was like, wow, this is so different. Like everyone's so good. Like it's hard to play against everyone. At that stage, like everyone's good. World juniors, everyone's good. There's like no one that's below someone else. Mm-hmm. It's just like that level or like that skill is always the same. It's just whoever wants to win more, whoever yeah. tries hard, like, you know. Yeah, I feel you. I think um, World Juniors definitely opens people's eyes, like players' eyes to, you know, the bigger picture. Like, there's so many great players out there. You are you may be the top in your in your country, but outside of you, there's so many amazing players and there's so much room for improvement. You know, I think it really opens – Does that, did it open your eyes to that? Yeah, I actually did because there's a lot of those players. They were playing adult tournaments already and they're starting to win. You know, like, I was yeah. super surprised of how good they were. You know, like, I want to be like them. You know, I want to get to that level, like, in the next couple of years, you know, maybe. Yeah, I definitely feel that, man. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. What are you saying? I uh, no, I was just saying, like, you know, World Juniors is super tough. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard for any player to get to, like, top 16, top, like, 32, top 64. Because yeah. there's so many players in Wales. Like, the draws are, like, 200-something players. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah ridiculous and yeah. every single country is so strong too especially yeah. with china and indonesia and, and japan and, and whatever and all these asian european yeah you know, <laughs> yeah, these, yeah these countries are crazy man they're super yeah. built yeah super ready yep yep they train their whole lives for it so yeah 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 definitely um next question what is your best experience in an international tournament i mean i haven't really played too many like Maybe Pan Am's count as one, but, like, mm. you know, I think the experience you get playing and, like, meeting new players and, like, uh, asking for tips and advice and maybe, like, you know, trading shirts with them, maybe, like, mm. remember them, they remember you. Like, that's really fun to me. And, like, you know, it gets me motivated, like, to see players this, this good at this level. Like, you know, I want to become a better player as much as them, uh, as much as they are and, like, you know, mm keep working to it you know i know they're better than me like you just, you just keep, gotta keep working like, mm-hmm. non-stop yeah. yeah definitely it kind of motivates you a little bit right those those international it motivates, yeah a lot yeah yeah um i saved the best question for last okay i, I love <laughs> oh, this <no>. question <laughs> you better be careful what you say all right <laughs> <laughs> who's your favorite mix partner who's your favorite oh, mix man. Partner? i mean i think i've had a lot of mixed partners actually it's it's really hard to choose um, everyone's really good. Uh, like they have their specialties, they have their, you know, weaknesses, you know, everyone's different. So it's really hard to choose between all my mixed partners. So I don't know if I'm supposed to choose, but like, you know, I'm gonna tell you right now, this person was, is one of your mixed partners. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, um, you know, if I had to choose, I think it would be someone from my club, like GBA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone that taught me a lot, someone I played with a lot. Uh-huh. Man, you, you, uh, you're you giving this girl a lot of compliments. And if this is not the girl that asked the damn question, <laughs> you trouble. Joshua, I should you're probably trouble. be pretty mad, man. I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, she taught me a lot how to play mix. So like, mm-hmm. And she's like an older sister to me. I think Angela Zhang, you know, if you guys know them, know her. Yeah. She's a really good player. Mm-hmm. She has a lot of results. I mean, she goes to uh, Stanford now, so. Yeah, yeah, she did get to Stanford. Yeah. Nice, yeah. you passed the test. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good job. Um, Yeah, I think Angela's a great player. I think, did I play against Angela before? Um, Might have in the tournament, too. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I played against you guys. I played against you and Angela, and I got hurt, remember? And then in the middle of the game, I got hurt. I jumped uh... and then landed wrong, and then. In, in the uh, Seattle tournament, in the Seattle tournament, in one of the Oh, Seattle yeah, yeah, we did, we did. Yeah, that was one of the last games I played, but with, for yeah, mix. for the injury. Yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, he, you guys played really well together. That's true. And then she, she's probably a really good mentor for you to like, you know, to because she yeah. is older with more experience and, and everything like that. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely. Nice. Um, but that's the end of the podcast today. Uh, but thank you, uh, Joshua, for coming. Out. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. yeah, thank, thank you, you for having me too. Yeah. Thank of you. course, of course. And um, guys, remember to click the like button and the subscribe button down below. It's greatly appreciated. And make sure you comment, do all the good stuff. Um, besides that, thank you guys for watching. And uh, we out. Thanks, Josh. Right. See you guys.